Hello, welcome to module four, surgical equipment. Um, in this module, we're gonna go over the layout of pre-op, PACU, and um, the OR itself. Uh, last module, we took a closer look at CSPD and their important responsibilities in the OR. This week, we're gonna take a look at the OR room itself um, pre-op and pack you. I want you to see kind of the flow of how a typical day will go uh, in the operating room. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna pretend to follow um, a surgical technologist, Mary, and a surgical nurse, Tom, through a typical day in the operating room. Mary and Tom will start their day uh, in the male and female locker rooms. Um, located right here, okay? We already discussed that these are unrestricted areas. Mary and Tom go into the locker rooms um, in their street clothes and change into surgical, hospital issued surgical clothes, um, caps and shoe covers. Um, now, after they change into their scrubs and hair, co hair cover and shoe covers, they'll go into the next access is the OR lounge. Um, this lounge is another semi-restricted area where staff can eat and take their breaks. Uh, the OR will be through doors about, you know, somewhere around here. Um, and leads to this outer hallway. And if you remember that outer hallway from the last slide um, is where, man, a lot, of, a lot of stuff happens in that outer hallway. This is surgeons, anesthesiologists, surgical techs, operating room patient care technicians, transporters, x-ray technicians, surgical assistants, physician assistants. Um, there's a lot of traffic in these areas, okay? This is also how nurses will bring the patients into their individual rooms. So Mary and Tom, they've changed. They've went to the lounge. Now they've walked into this outer um, uh, restricted area, which a mask will be required. Um, so before they leave that lounge, you don't need a mask in the lounge, but once you leave that lounge, you should have a mask on. Um, they start their day by heading over to the control desk, okay? This is one area where there will be someone in charge uh, who handles the schedule for the day. Uh, this is also where each staff member can see where they are assigned for the day. After receiving their assignment, um, sometimes they'll also have a morning huddle where the, the managers will discuss any important issues for the day or maybe cases that have to be turned over quickly. Um, but so after that happens, Mary and Tom head off to their assigned OR room. So here in this particular OR, we have 10 rooms, okay? One is hidden right there, you can't see it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, depending on the schedule for that room and the type of procedures that will be done for that day, different types of equipment will be needed. Often in hospitals, you'll see one room that's dedicated for cysto and two rooms that are dedicated for ortho. And then you'll have two heart rooms um, and so on and so forth, okay? Each of those rooms will have specific equipment. As you can see over here in this picture, um, this room has a tower. This tower includes a camera. Uh, you can see a monitor here, uh, a light cord, this could be where scopes are done so that that does that lives in that room and that wouldn't have to be brought in and out. If you're in a different room that doesn't have that equipment and let's say you're doing a knee scope, um, then this is the time where Mary and Tom are gonna start collecting all of that equipment that they may need for, their, for those knee scopes. Um, things like positioners, bags, bags of fluid, cameras, light cords, monitors, um, if they were in a gynae room or a gynecological room, they'd have completely different equipment, okay? After the team assures that the equipment is ready for the day, Mary then heads to the inner core, 
where her supplies are located. This is that case cart that we talked about last week. And so this inner core um, is filled with prepared case carts for the cases of the day, the first cases of the day. Um, these case carts have all the supplies needed for your specific procedure. There's also gonna be within this inner core shelves of extra sterile supplies. Um, and they'll be kept there for quick access during the surgical procedures so that we don't have to wait for CSPD to bring something. We can, a uh, circulator can run into the inner core and grab some extra gloves or sponges if they need them. Um, okay, so Mary finds her first case cart of the day. She brings it into room five and the team begins to open and set up the sterile supplies. While Mary continues to open and prep the sterile field, Tom is going to go to get um, the patient in pre-op, okay? Pre-op will be connected to the operating room. Um, this is where he's going to complete his pre-op routine. This is going to be checking consents, checking the ID band, making sure that you have the correct patient, um, making sure that confirming which side is to be done if this is a specific side surgery. After his, the pre-op routines are done, Tom will transport the patient on a cart back to the OR. He's coming back and he's going to go through that outer hallway again and through outer doors into room five. Now, all of these OR, door, uh, OR suites also have doors into the inner core, okay? Now, we talked about there being a lot of traffic here. We want to keep these doors closed as much as possible due to that extreme amount of traffic. Um, I want you to think about microbes. If you have a lot of people um, walking around in those areas, that's going to stir up microorganisms. The more people, the more microbes. Um, okay, so Tom brings our patient back to room five. Uh, and this is where that surgical procedure is going to be completed. After the procedure is complete, Mary begins to clean up the sterile field while Tom brings the patient back to PACU. Now, remember, PACU is that post anesthesia care unit. Um, so, again, he is going to bring out these outside doors to this outer hallway and then into PACU, okay? Um, now, an important note, once the patient has entered that OR room, so we brought that patient into the OR, all of the opened instrumentation and supplies are considered dirty or contaminated with the patient's microbes, okay? That patient comes into the room without a mask, breathing, uh, on their skin, they have specific microbes. And once they enter there, we are considering everything in that room dirty. Once instruments and supplies are dirty, they cannot enter an area with sterile supplies, such as another OR or the inner core. So I couldn't take instruments here and walk through the inner core or go into another room carrying a dirty instrument. That means we're transferring that microbe into multiple clean and sterile areas. The dirty supplies must be covered, taken through the outer hallway, which does not hold sterile supplies, and then taken to the surgical decontamination room. During, and you'll remember it was over in this area here. During this time, housekeeping or environmental services will be called to clean or turn over our room five. Specific cleaning methods are used, which include new mops and rags for each dirty room. After the room is appropriately cleaned, Mary looks for her next case cart and repeats the process until the scheduled cases are done for the day. You can see that same circular path that we discussed in CSPD. The path is the one way. 
You're never going to bring those dirty instruments back into a sterile OR. Okay. Um, it has to go um, it, that dirty, the dirty instruments and dirty supplies have to go into decontam directly and not go into even a clean elevator. The path is one way so that that dirty is never brought into clean. During the next module, we're gonna go into further detail of the OR suite itself. Um, and then we're gonna see exactly what goes on during that intraoperative process.